We're joined on INSEAD Knowledge by Professor Ilian Mihoff, a professor of economics at INSEAD. We're in the first 100 days of the Obama administration. How do you think he has handled the uh, banking crisis so far and the economic downturn? It's obviously a very difficult recession. It's a very difficult um, thing to handle. Um, so far, I think that um, it's a little bit on the slow side in the sense that uh, the fiscal policy package has been approved, has been voted, but it's still, you know, there is still time until it is implemented and that's what counts at the end of the day. Uh, nevertheless, this is a very positive thing and I think that the stimulus package is okay. Uh, the only thing else that remains to be done in this area is that I think that there has to be probably a second one in the second half of the year. At least there must be an announcement so that consumer confidence goes up and people do not interpret this only as a temporary boost rather than a more long-lasting boost in demand. I think that on this side things are moving in the right direction. One wishes that they were moving faster, but still, yeah, I think it, it's in the, in the right direction. On the more important issue, which is the financial sector, uh, things are not progressing as fast as people expected, as most of us expected. I was thinking that uh, in the very beginning of the administration, uh, some sort of an aggregator bank or a bad bank will be set up to take care of the toxic assets. Fed Chairman Ben Bernanke seems pretty upbeat about uh, the prospects for the economy, uh, saying that, uh, that the US economy should uh, get out of the recession by the end of the year. Would you agree with that? This is a very um, likely scenario. It's very reasonable to expect that by the end of the year the economy will start recovering. The reason I'm saying this is because um, from a macroeconomic point of view, there two fundamental imbalances that have to be restored. The first one is the ratio of house prices to income per capita. Prices of homes had uh, gone up too much relative to what people earn and obviously they couldn't repay their mortgages. So now this ratio is at about 15% higher than its historical average. And uh, by the summer of this year, with the current speed of falling prices, the ratio will be restored. In other words, house prices will become again affordable. We can think about this as an affordability index. The second index that has to go back to normal is the consumption to income ratio because of the lax uh, financial standards in lending, lending standards I should say, and uh, because of uh, cheap liquidity people had been borrowing too much and consuming too much and the ratio of consumption to income was unsustainable. So right now consumption is falling and again looking at the recent trends by the summer of this year consumption to income will be at a relatively sustainable level. In other words fundamentally in the economy the uh, foundations for recovery would have been set. Of course the big issue is still what policymakers do and um, I have been arguing that there are four things that the Roosevelt did, did in the Great Depression and I think that four things have to be done now. The first thing is monetary policy has to be very expansionary and so far the Fed has been extremely um, uh, forthcoming in this direction by introducing a lot of liquidity in the market through various facilities. The second thing is um, fiscal policy and again we see fiscal policy being more aggressive than during the Great Depression even and I think that, that will help once it takes effect. The third thing and probably the most important thing is dealing with the financial sector and uh, so far uh, policymakers have tried um, injecting liquidity in the system and I think that was important. Recapitalizing banks that was uh, also important but it doesn't work without the most important thing which is dealing with the toxic assets and uh, I was very disappointed in November when uh, Hank Paulson all of a sudden pulled out his support for this and he said that they're not going to do it. And but there are a lot of problems to work through the system. You mentioned toxic assets. Um, all those uh, housing loans that would need to be maybe uh, sold on at um, you know, cents to the, the dollar. That's true, but uh, with all these banks are not going to lend. So the toxic assets are what I say the cancer on the balance sheet of, uh, of commercial banks. 
Uh, the reason that we're in such a deep recession now and still you know, the dynamics are not good is because banks stopped lending in the fall of 2008. They stopped lending because they saw what happened to Lehman Brothers. That Lehman Brothers were led to fail. And each one of these banks, whether commercial or investment bank, were worried that they'll be left in a situation like this. And uh, they were afraid that if the market sees that the price of these assets, the value of these assets goes down, then the market depositors uh, investors might pull out their liquidity and their confidence in these banks. They may have what is called a wholesale bank run. If they pull out money from banks, then banks have to fail because they hold very illiquid assets. If we remove the toxic assets, then banks will have a big chunk of their uncertainty, of the uncertainty removed, and this will eventually lead to resumption of lending. In newspapers, we often see debates about the price of these assets. So the big issue is, and that's why actually the original plan was derailed. So the issue is at which, at what price do you get these mortgage-backed securities? And in my view, this is a non-issue. This is a non-issue for the following reason. Uh, both the taxpayers, the government, and uh, banks want to sell these assets at fair price. The most important thing to understand is that the issue of toxic assets is macroeconomic and to remove the macroeconomic uncertainty will have a huge benefit for the economy and the economy will restart again in terms of um, recovery and so on. The important thing is to start implementing it and eventually to get the recovery going. And to get lending going again. Exactly, to get lending going because uh, I, I mentioned in the recent article that there is only one way known to the mankind to create a Great Depression, and that is by ruining the financial sector. If the financial sector doesn't work, then the economy is not going to recover. And uh, therefore, if there is no lending, then the economy is not going to recover. But a depression now is very unlikely? I would say it's very unlikely. So I think that, uh, as we can see, policymakers might be struggling, they might be delaying their actions, but they realize that they have to do something about it. And I think that eventually they will, um, they'll do it. Uh, of course, they'd better do it sooner rather than later, because um, with time, we get more and more of toxicity in the assets uh, that they hold, since more and more companies start uh, facing problems with repaying their loans, and we have a pileup of non-performing loans. There have been concerns that the Obama administration has taken on too much. You're saying it's moving too slowly. Well, there are a lot of issues that they have to cover. Um, I would say that they're moving too slowly, possibly from an idealistic point of view. I mean, from kind of like an ideal scenario. You know the actions are one, two, three, four, five, and you want to implement them right away. But of course the political process and the details, sometimes the technical details of these uh, programs are so complicated that uh, you know, it's not possible to do it uh, faster than this. Um, I'm not sure that anyone else could have done it faster. It's, um, it's only a guess. We've seen um, hundreds of billions of dollars being pumped into the system. Um, essentially, this is going to lead to a situation where there'll be a high level of public sector indebtedness for perhaps the next few years. Clearly, the debt to GDP ratio, or the indebtedness of governments and countries, will increase uh, throughout the world. But uh, still, we have to recognize one very important thing. The other option is not to do anything. And if we don't do anything, then actually debt to GDP ratio, the indebtedness will increase by much more. Uh, there was uh, you know, this case of Japan in the 1990s. Some people have argued, and I think rightly so, that Japan's debt to GDP ratio increased from 64% in 91 to 178% in 2007, that is three times. Not because uh, Japan had a very aggressive policy action, but exactly the opposite. Japan had no aggressive fiscal policy action. They were trying to fix a hole here and there, 
and as a result, the economy was growing very slowly. When the economy grows slowly, tax revenues are low. When tax revenues are low, you have a budget deficit and you pile up debt. And so I think that by acting swiftly and very aggressively, initially debt will go up, but then in the long run, it will be better than just waiting on the side and, and you know, hoping that the, re the economy will recover on its own. So just in summary, you're pretty optimistic about uh, uh, that we can get out of this situation within this year. I think so. I, as I said, you know, it, it depends on whether the financial sector problems are addressed promptly. Um, I still have hopes that in the next few days, Gaithner will announce his plan and it will be a reasonable plan. And uh, if the bad bank is set up by the end of April and or beginning of May, and the whole process begins, I think that in the summer or on the, on by early fall, we have all the conditions for the recovery to start. Still for the whole year, the economy would have contracted most likely because the first two quarters of this year are going to be terrible given the lack of lending and the sharp decline in demand. But uh, eventually, you know, the recovery will start. Professor Ilian Mihoff, Professor of Economics at INSEAD, thanks for joining us on INSEAD Thank Knowledge. You. Thank you. Thank you.